Hello everyone, welcome back, back to the channel, back to another episode of Desert Island Discs, or Desert Island Movies if you will, where we're going to go through another shelf of my collection, take a look at all the films on that shelf, then ultimately choose that one film that I would take above all others, all else on that shelf. So let's get into it. Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel and I believe this is episode 25 of Desert Island Discs. So there's a few to go back and check out if you haven't done so already. Hit that subscribe button, come and join the channel and why not? And today we are continuing with the teas and I have a shelf here next to me. Um, I appreciate that it's out of sight for you. But yeah, we're going to take a look at every film on that shelf um, and then I'll pick that one film that I would choose above all others. Um, if I had to choose one to take with me onto a desert island, if that makes any sense, you can do the same. Join in. Let me know in the comments down below what film you would choose. Um, let me know any you know films that may have snuck in there, if not for that one. Um, let me know your thoughts on what I pick and see if you can guess along the way what film I will go with. So we're going to carry on we're going to get straight into it now let's do it let's go okay so let me just shift these along a little bit first up is the premium collection from hmv version of trading places which does come with a lovely slip um and also inside some art cards great film trading places um, dan Aykroyd, eddie murphy um, Old Wasser Face, Jamie Lee Curtis, then Home Elliot, Don Amici. Um, Don Amici was in Bigfoot and Hendersons, wasn't he? Yes. Um, then Home Elliot, obviously Indiana Jones. Um, yeah, a good film. A, a very good film, actually. Um, very funny. Recently, I believe this was given a 4K treatment. Not my, um, not something I'd upgrade to 4K. I don't feel the need to upgrade all of these comedies to 4k i don't see what you're getting out of it if that makes sense so moving on a film that this year is actually getting a sequel of sorts and that is twister as you can see i bought it for five pound in cex twister directed by jeanne de bont who um also directed speed and speed 2 and yeah bill paxton the late great bill paxton stars in this film it's one of those early disaster -y style movies um it's okay it's an okay movie i think it's lauded over a lot more than what i would give it credit for to be honest with you um it was okay um sequel this year i believe is called twisters um it's original isn't it you know i don't know about that i don't know what, what whether it's even considered, a, yeah, is it a sequel just by name? Do you know what I mean? If that makes sense. I don't know. I don't know. It's only returning cast. I don't know. You know, unless you throw some sharks into the mix, then I may not be interested. Anyway, moving on. We come to a film that I haven't yet to watch, and I picked it up for £1.50, and it's Nicolas Cage in Tokarev. Is this any good? Have you seen it? let me know and here we go with a film that i think as this airs the tv series will be on ted yeah ted mark Wahlberg, mila kunis seth mcfarlane seth mcfarlane obviously voices ted himself seth mcfarlane is writer director of the film um it's yeah, from the creators of Family Guy. I love Family Guy. Okay, it's not as funny as it used to be. Not as edgy. Um, 
but I still have a lot of fun with Family Guy and the older ones are hilarious. And yes, this year we do have a TED prequel series. I'm looking forward to that. But by the time this airs, like I said, that may be gone and finished. Then we have the sequel, Ted 2. Um, the Thunder Buddies are back. A lot of Flash Gordon elements in this one. Um, very funny still. Very funny. A um, lot of fun. And now we're moving into... I've got a 4K here on this shelf. Um, just because of the the series that it comes from, the film series. And that is Universal Soldier. Actually, I believe this is just a 4K slip. I believe that if I open this up, it's not going to be the 4K inside. And I am correct, it's not the 4K inside. It's just the Blu-ray. Okay, so why is that? All right, I've got the lovely Best Buy exclusive version of Universal Soldier 4K uh, Steelbook with the you know, clear slip that changes the artwork. So I sold my other version, um, the 4K, to CEX. Um, but I kept the slip. I kept the slip just to sit over my Blu-ray version. I don't know why. I just did um so yes so i thought that was slip list but interestingly i've got another version of universal soldier there to go onto the double pile uh there we go anyway next up we have universal soldier 2 from 88 films with the slip which is limited to 3000 by all accounts this is number 1475 Part of the Jean-Claude Van Damme range that 88 films were doing. Um, and inside you do get a little booklet about the film and a poster um, and a reversible sleeve. Now there was a time before 88 films re-released this film. The version before was out of print and went for quite a considerable amount of money. The Universe Soldier Return. On a rewatch, it wasn't as bad as what I recall it to have been. And that brings us to Universal Soldier Regeneration, which is the third one in the franchise that came later on. Um, Jean-Claude Van Damme is back, Dolph Lundgren is in it, but only in more of a cameo appearance. And directed by John Hyams. I think this is a strong film. Seriously, for me, it is up there with the first Universal Soldier, and I might actually put it above that first Universal Soldier film. Um, it's darker in tone, it ain't got the comedic elements that first film had. Um, the setting of Chernobyl, I really liked. I, there was something about this film that just, it, it just, I was on board with it. When I saw it, I thought, okay, it blew me away. I thought it was very, very good. Um, compared to what I thought I'd be getting. And then, obviously, last in the franchise is Universal Soldier Day of Wrecking. And I still don't know how this film sits within continuity of the other films, whether it does, whether it doesn't. This film is a complete mystery to me. I just don't get it. It's like they've made, they've taken, possibly taken a script for another film, worked it into a Universal Soldier script and just gone with it and didn't care about anything. And I think this is John Hyams as well. Yeah, directed by John Hyams. I, I don't understand. If someone can enlighten me as to how this film works with the others or if it's just a standalone... I, I, I don't know. The film just... oh. Every time I look at that film, it just like... I, I don't get you. I don't understand how you work. Um, please someone enlighten me. Then we have a bootleg version, and it's still sealed actually, of True Lies, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, got this a while ago, obviously we have the 4K version on the horizon, um, although it looks like the upgrade's been done by AI or something, and it's questionable on how it's going to look. But yeah, this, like, I think this is Spanish, is that Spanish? Mentiras polyester it sounds it you can get these um yeah there you go then we have a, a i've actually got a bootleg here a bootleg for a film obviously it's for a film tomorrow war 
Chris Pratt, Yvonne Strzovsky, who starred in, um, she was in Dexter, before that she was in Chuck, she would have made a good Captain Marvel, actually, um, maybe a little bit old for it though, J.K. Simmons is in this, uh, yeah, looking at the back but yeah a bootleg version of tomorrow war one of those films that we haven't been given anywhere on physical and that brings me to another one i might as well do the other one now as well and this is a fantastic film let me take it out of this little plastic bag that i've got it in for no reason whatsoever it's togo um william defoe and this is a film um that was a Disney Plus movie in the early days when Disney Plus first started. This was one of their first original movies. And it's such a shame that Disney haven't put this to physical media. Seriously. If you haven't seen this film and you've got access to Disney Plus or any other means, um, seriously, watch it. Watch this film. It is seriously very good. Um, Leonard Sapples leads a team of sled dogs across the wintry Alaskan tundra in 1925 yeah Togo was a very good film very good film um, then we have Tom and Jerry the movie I picked this up cheap I like Tom it's still sealed look uh, um, cost me about fiver yeah did it work didn't it work uh, uh, I, I don't think it worked as well as what it could have done. Then we have These Final Hours. It's an Australian movie. Um, I believe it's an Australian movie anyway, if I remember rightly. It's been some time. I can't remember it that well. It's not a good sign, is it? And this is one for the collection that I don't know why I've got. Reese Witherspoon, Chris Pine, Tom Hardy, great cast. This means war. I didn't think it was that good, to be honest with you. Now, here's a film that I've got several times over because I've got the 4K of it as well. So it is Titanic, James Cameron's masterpiece. But not only that, I have that version as well which is a 3e version it was cheap it was a couple of quid i picked it up just get a nice shiny slip i don't know things you do but there we go um titanic great film james cameron do have the 4k version as it stands at the moment i'm still yet to watch the 4k version um but keeping with that titanic theme we have titanic 2 Yes. Why have I got this in the... Cl okay. I didn't buy this. I didn't buy it. Um, it's got nothing to do with Titanic, obviously. Um, I was, there was something else I bought. I bought another film. and I can't remember what it was. And the cheapest way for me to buy the other film was from a seller on eBay who was selling that film and this film included with it. Just randomly. Um, so, obviously I opted for the cheapest way of getting the other I can't remember what the other film is for the life of me now I cannot remember the other film but there we go so moving on then we have oh, okay Adam Sandler in That's My Boy this is a pickup not too long ago over the past year I think I picked this up I watched it I like Andy Samberg from Brooklyn Nine-Nine as well and I had fun with this film now I've said this before and you may have heard for me Adam Sandler films. I, I, I quite like some of his stuff. Um, I find it quite amusing. But what it does is it's a... It numbs my mind. It, it, watching an Adam Sandler film is like being given a, a short-term lobotomy. Um, and I mean that in a very good way. In the sense that my mind's quite busy all the time. Um, and I have to do things to slow it down, to calm it down, to to stop it thinking, um, stop it asking, stop asking questions, and all this sort of a thing. And I find Adam Sandler films have this this effect on me, where I watch it 
and I just dumb down completely for 90 minutes, two hours, which is a fantastic thing to happen. And yeah, I do find these films quite funny. Um, okay, there are others that I've switched off. His Netflix era of films, apart from the ones he done with uh, Jennifer Aniston, um, I forget what they were called. Um, the others that he's done, Hubie Halloween, the Western one, the Western one I didn't get through, Hubie Halloween was awful. Um, yeah, so, but uh, Amazon can make me laugh. And then we have The Tiger, foreign language film I picked up in CEX. A uh, good film, decent watch, I enjoyed it a lot. And then here we have the very first HMV Premium Collection Edition release. And it is of the 1954 movie Them with the giant ants. I grew up on these sort of films. I remember watching these sort of films on TV. You know, um, Dan Triffids, um, the, the Old World of Worlds, Tarantula, which you feel that I should really get. Them. And this is them, and it does come with some art cards that I've still kept sealed. Um, yeah, I have a lot of fun with these sort of films, these older, you know, B-movie type of films from back in the day. Um, yeah. Enjoyable, enjoyable. Then we have here Eric Banner and Rachel McAdams in The Time Traveller's Wife. I oh, just picked that up cheap as well. Moving on. Ben Affleck, Rebecca Hall, John Hamm, Jeremy Renner, Blake Lively in the movie The Town. An extended cut. I've not watched the non-extended cut. I've only seen the extended cut of this. Um, yeah, very good. And now moving on to some of my wife's what films are my wife's that are in here and honestly they are they are the wife's they're not mine so don't be judge, judging me for these because they're not mine seriously they're not mine um twilight saga three of the films there um and then you've got breaking dawn one and two i've <coughs> seen bits and pieces because, um, like I said, the wife liked them, and then my daughter, when she was very young, kind of got into them. I think she watched all five in one day. I was kicking around as well in the house, so they were on. I wasn't watching them. They're not my cup of tea. Um, I don't like them at all. I don't see no worth in them. But there we go. Then we have Tin Man. This was a um, TV miniseries. Um, Obviously, based upon Wizard of Oz, and it stars Zooey de Chanel, among others. Um, yeah. And this is a good film directed by John McTiernan, Thomas Crown Affair. And this is the newer version that come at us from 88 Films with a really gorgeous slip with new art on it. There's the original art. Pierce Brosnan's very good in it. Um, Rene Rousseau is fantastic in it. You do get a poster with it. You get a reversible sleeve, a slip of some sleeve of some sort. Um, yeah, a solid movie. I, I, on my last watch, which was when I bought it, um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was a, a very good, entertaining, well written film. I've not seen the original. Thomas Crowell there. Then we have here from Arrow Video, and it's the 4K version of um, the movie Time Bandits. Yeah, and I watched this as well. I didn't think the conversion was that great, um, to be honest with you. I probably could have just stuck with the standard edition. You do get a booklet in there, you do get a poster in there. Um, it's a good film. It's a great film. The wife didn't understand it when it was on. She was like, you don't have to watch some rubbish. Why are you watching this rubbish? Um, I just said to her, you know, don't come at me with that. Twilight. So, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's a shame. I think Arrow dropped the ball on that, that transfer. But there we go. So moving on. A film starring Jeremy Renner. Ed Helms, Jake Johnson. Um, it's got quite a good cast in it, and that is the movie Tag. And um, did this have a different title in this country? Very possibly. Um, this is the one where Jeremy Renner broke both his arms in a fall, I believe. Um, yeah, it was, I, I had fun with it. I had fun with that movie. Now, where are we at? I'll pick this up for a pound. The theory of everything. Um, Obviously, the story of Stephen Hawking, played by Eddie Redmayne. I, I'm not a fan of Eddie Redmayne. Um, I'm going to say something controversial now. I think he comes across as retarded in every role that he plays. I shouldn't use the word retarded, I know, I'm sorry. He comes across as special um, in every role he plays. Even in that Harry Potter spin-off series, his, his performance was like, I'm watching someone who's got... Um, who, who's not all there, should we say. And, um, yeah, again, that's more one for the wife than me. It's not my cup of tea. Eddie Redmayne. Um, yeah, I like Le Miserable. I don't like his singing in it. I hate it. It really, oh, it really bugs me. It really grates on me. But there we go. And next up, one pound fifty. I picked this up just to rewatch again. And that is... Talladega Nights, the ballad of Ricky Bobby. But I didn't get around to watching it. Now, I like Will Ferrell, but I can take or leave some of his stuff. Um, generally stuff when it's more sporting, like this. Um, but I still ain't got around to re-watching it. I wanted to give it another try. And it was £1.50, so why not? You know, it's less than a cup of coffee. I don't drink coffee. But yeah, so Talladega Nights. Um... Love him or hate him, Will Ferrell. Like I said, I, I, I like Will Ferrell, but there's some of his stuff that just doesn't work for me whatsoever. Um, the first Anchorman film doesn't work for me. I know everyone said, oh, it's great, it's funny, it's funny. And I remember watching it for the first time, um, and, and afterwards I said, you know, I think I had a defective copy. I think I had an edited version of the film where any humour was edited out because the film didn't make me laugh at all. Funnily enough, I enjoyed Anchorman 2, which I know is considered the lesser of the two films. Um, I got more out of that one than what I did the first one. There we go. Strange, though. So we've got three more titles to look at, and then that's it. Because now we're sort of stepping into the territory of you. And I've got three U's that spill on this shelf. Before we get down to the next shelf, and the next shelf is U's, V's, and W's by the looks of it onto one shelf because they're letters that you amass less film of. So the first film here under you picked up a 50p and it's Liam Neeson Unknown. I can't really tell you much about it. I have seen it. I don't really recall it. I picked it up for 50 pence on my trips to CEX. Is it any good or isn't it? You tell me. Then we have Adrian Brody, Antonio Banderas and John Malkovich in the movie Unchained. This was a cheap pickup as well. And still a film I've not yet put in to watch. Again, is it any good? Have you seen this? Let me know down in the comments. And then last but not least, another film I picked up for £1. And it stars George Clooney and Mia Famiglieri or whatever her name is. Uh, for me you are i can't remember i can't pronounce the name but oh, i can if i read it but um yeah I, I didn't mind it i enjoyed this film it was pretty good i like george clooney um i think he's very good and stuff um i didn't mind his batman either but yeah um up in the air so there we go that's that's that shelf done that shelf done and finished with um it's not a complete shelf i've still got yay amount of space i can fit some more titles on that shelf but we're gonna leave it there for a little bit of a shorter one today um and then obviously in two weeks time we will get into the shelf below and then after that i might jump towards another um still book shelf but yeah so this 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 shelf here um 
there's some quality films there's some not so quality films um so what would you take first of all out of all the films that i've gone through let me know in the comments down below jot it down now um that film above all others here that you would you would take with you if you had to let all the others go and you could only pick one film what film would it be drop that answer down in the comments below right now um and i'll have a little think and uh, i'll give you my answer okie doke so um i've got some runners up i've got some runners up on the on on this one um and yeah i i'm yeah i i don't know i don't know okay so the runners up on this on this shelf right are number one universal soldier regeneration like i said i love this film for me this is the highlight of the universal soldier franchise it truly is now i am aware that there is another version there is a, another there are tv movies called universal soldier 2 and 3 i was going to mention that earlier um i've never seen them the tv movies and not you know i think but what's his face is in it oh what's his name you know um Oh. oh, you know, Smoking the Bandit. What's his name? I can't remember his name. I think he's in them. Um, I may be wrong. I've never seen them. But yeah, so that's one um, that, that's a runner-up because I do really enjoy that third entry into the Universal Soldier franchise. Seriously, I think it's a fantastic film. So um, another film that I would, would be considered as a film that I'd take with me, Titanic. Um, James Cameron's masterpiece. It's a, a truly awe-inspiring film. The the story of how he made it, you know, the building of the ship, everything, and it's one of those stories that intrigues everyone. The sinking of the Titanic, um, and and I really like the movie. It's a really, really good film. Um, but 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 but, and and I'm still toying whether it's Titanic or this. Um, but the film that I would take with me, I mean, some people might choose True Lies. I think True Lies is one of Cameron's weakest films, to be honest. It, it, it's okay, it's good, it's fun, but it's not the strongest Cameron film for me at all. Um, Trading Places is a good film. Ted is a lot of fun. You know, Thomas Crown Affair is a very good film. But that film that I would be taking, if I could, in reality, I probably wouldn't be able to. Because it hasn't had a release. And that is Togo. Yes. A William Dafoe dog sled um, film. And I think this came out at a similar time as the Harrison Ford one, Into the Wild. With the CGI dog. No CGI dog in this. This, seriously. This film blew me away when I watched it. When I first watched it. And I think it's a travesty that Disney have not released this film to physical media. Um, I know people are all excited that Disney are releasing Star Wars content to physical media, that they're releasing Marvel content. They don't want to release that stuff. They're just trying to make a little bit of money at the end of the day on that content. And I don't think you're going to see all of the Marvel or Star Wars content given physical releases. Um, you know, there's plenty of other stuff that Disney Plus has made that they, you know, or Disney have made that they're not releasing to physical media. Family Guy has always been profitable on physical media. In fact, physical media on a couple of occasions has saved Family Guy from cancellation. And, you know, they don't release them anymore. Um, Simpsons, they don't, not that I'd buy the Simpsons, I don't, Family Guy I would, um, but yeah, so there's still a lot of stuff that they're not releasing, they're just looking at releasing what they know will definitely give them a small return at least, and seriously, Togo, it's, it's, it's sad because these films are, are going to be not seen by many people, 
They're going to be forgotten by people because they're just there and they can be removed at any time. And, you know, that's why I will always bootleg. You know, and this is a quality film. It's well made. It's well directed. It's well acted. It looks great. And it's an emotional story as well. And seriously, if you haven't seen this film, I highly recommend you go and watch Togo. It's, um, yeah, a, a solid, solid film. And I know someone that will agree with me on that assessment of the movie. Um, yeah, that's my choice. Togo is the film for me. So there we go. So, like I said, in two weeks' time, you can expect me back with another episode of Desert Island Movies, where we will delve into the U, Vs and Ws of films along the next shelf, which is a full-up shelf. And then in four weeks' time, we shall delve over there, behind the camera, into another shelf of 4K and Blu-ray steelbooks. Um, before then, jumping back over here, because I've got, after that, I'll have two more shelves over here before I delve into the 4Ks behind me. Um, one of these shelves down the bottom is all horror related, so there's going to be a horror themed one as well. So um, make sure you subscribe, hit the subscribe button, join the channel, comment again down below the film that you would have picked here. Maybe you're surprised by my pick, and let's talk film. And I shall see you on the next one, hopefully. So I'll catch you then. Take care all, and goodbye.